Hello, I'm Dr. Ken Landa. Let's talk about Cosentex. Cosentex is a newly available drug for treatment of people who have moderate to severe psoriasis. It's called a biologic and it's heavily marketed so you can't go about half hour on the television without seeing an ad for this particular chemical. It was approved initially by the Food and Drug Administration in January 2015 for treatment of patients with psoriasis and then it gained additional marketing approval in January 2016 for people who had psoriatic arthritis. Now psoriasis is a very common disease. It's estimated that at the present time about seven and a half million people in the United States have psoriasis and it's severe enough to warrant biologic therapy in probably somewhere around a million and a half patients. We know that if you have psoriasis, chances are about 30% that you're going to develop psoriatic arthritis, maybe even a bunch more are going to develop it at a later time. Now this drug works because it interferes with the action of a chemical known as interleukin 17A. Now interleukin 17A is just one of those chemicals that the body needs to stimulate the immune system, to stimulate inflammation. If you block that chemical, you block inflammation, and since psoriasis is an inflammatory disease, then you seem to improve psoriasis, and it seems to work pretty well. There are some problems, however. If you take a drug like this that interferes with the inflammatory or immune system, then you might increase your risk of an infection, you might increase your risk of developing tuberculosis if you've ever been exposed to that and it's lurking somewhere inside your body. If you happen to have Crohn's disease or regional enteritis, that might cause it to flare this particular drug. We know that the pen-like device or the pre-filled syringe that contains the Cosentex contains a cap with latex, so if you're latex allergic, this drug isn't for you. And we know that the drug is not appropriate for people who are going to receive any kind of uh, vaccine with live virus, or even for that matter, since it blocks the inflammation, even a non-live virus. Now, the drug is being heavily advertised. The advertising can begin or sometime in early 2016, direct-to-consumer advertisement. It's a new kind of drug, they say. It's a touchy-feely commercial. They say, see me, and then they show these patients who are suffering from psoriasis. They show their faces. We know that the company wants to gain significant loyalty among physicians and among patients because there are several other drugs that are soon to come before the Food and Drug Administration that are going to challenge it, that are going to be in the same family. Drugs by big pharmaceutical corporations like Eli Lilly and like Amgen that was recently substituted for Valiant Pharmaceuticals. We know the drug is given at a dose of 300 milligrams and that injection is going to be underneath the surface of the skin, much like insulin. We know it's going to be given initially and then again at one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, and then given every month. We know that if you happen to have psoriatic arthritis without significant psoriasis, the dose might be half as much as it is for treatment of psoriasis. So the drug can be taken by itself or it can be taken with another drug known as methotrexate. The effectiveness in randomized controlled studies is quite dramatic. There is no question that the drug seems to work quite well. We don't know that it's going to work as well in the community setting as it does in these highly controlled studies. But investigators who work with the drug looking at patients after about 12 weeks say that the patients are either clear or completely clear about 65% of the time. Now that compares with, say, Otesla, also highly advertised, and that only causes patients to be clear or completely clear in about 20% of cases. So 65% clear or completely clear with the Cosentex versus only about 20% with the Otesla. Now the problem with Cosentex is the cost is out of the world, out of this world. It's absolutely ridiculous. So the cost per injection, the cost per dose, is going to be, cash price, according to GoodRx.com, about $4,400. That means that over the course of the year, it's going to cost in excess cash price, according to GoodRx.com, of more than $60,000.
brought to you by Novartis Pharmaceuticals, whose sales this past year were $50 billion. Their profit was about $33 billion, and they're shooting for sales of 4 to $5 billion with Cosentex. Now, because the drug costs so much, the insurance companies say, hey, you better take some other kind of drug first and see if you get better. Try methotrexate. Methotrexate costs about $400 a year, not $66,000, but $400 a year cash price. And we know that that's very good. You also could take several other drugs like hydroxyurea or cyclosporin or azathioprine, and even drugs like Humira or Enbrel, which are also biologics. Now, there's another drug, and the drug is called Bodalumab. And this drug was originally developed by Amgen in conjunction with another company called AstraZeneca, two big pharmaceutical companies. Three studies showed that the drug was probably better than Stellara, another one of these biologics. It was ready for a new drug application for the FDA. It was thought to sail through the FDA if it was ever going to be studied. But all of a sudden, Amgen pulled out of the drug. The reason it pulled out of the drug was that studies showed that there was an increase in suicides and suicidal ideation. And the drug company thought, oh my goodness, well, how are we going to market a drug to doctors and to patients? when we have to have a warning that says you might commit suicide if you use the drug. Well, originally the company downplayed the idea that suicide had anything to do with the drug. Then they said that there's no cost and effect relationship. They saw the drug as potentially selling about a billion and a half dollars a year. And then they said, hey, we can't market this. We can't tolerate that. So it was picked up by another company. And the company was known as Valiant. Valiant's the company that you've seen. They're investigated by the Securities and Exchange Commission. They're investigated by the Senate. They're being investigated by the U.S. Attorney for Southern New York. They're being investigated by the Attorney General of Massachusetts, all for hanky-panky or potential hanky-panky or alleged hanky-panky. But anyway, so they bought this drug for about $500 million. They gained the rights everywhere except in Asia. And they assumed all of the costs for manufacturing the drug and doing everything else with the drug. Well, this company also, by the way, bought that drug for hypoactive sexual desire in premenopausal women. You know, the women who don't have any sexual desire could go and take the pill called Addy. Doesn't seem to work very well. And the company bought it for a billion dollars, can't seem to sell it. Well, we have another problem. So not only do we have the suicidal ideation in the family, but now we have a drug known as Reptiva. Reptiva gained marketing approval in 2003. It was made by a gigantic company, a company known as Genentech. Genentech was probably the father of all these biologic drugs. And the drug came on the market. It interfered with the immune system, and it was taken off the market in June of 2009 because it was apparently associated with a viral infection of the brain known as progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, a condition, a viral condition, that most of us have, but we keep it under good control because our immune systems work. But when the immune system doesn't work and the virus starts to grow, grow in the white matter of the brain, then it causes some clumsiness, some personality changes, it causes some progressive weakness, some visual problems, some speech problems, and then it can go on in many cases to cause death. Well, such is the life of these biologics. There's a lot we don't know about them. Your immune system is very important, very important to keep you healthy. Psoriasis is the immune system run amok. And the question is, what do we do to treat it? Yes, indeed, we have these biologic drugs. They're very effective. At least some of them are very effective. Unfortunately, they're very expensive. And we know that some of the drugs can cause mischief with the immune system, like Reptiva and the progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy. And we know that sometimes the drugs may lead to suicide, or at least suicidal thoughts. So you have to wonder, is a drug for $66,000 that might cause some of these issues really a good idea? Or should you try some of the other less expensive drugs first? Maybe drugs that don't seem to have the impact on your immune system. Maybe a drug like methotrexate for less than $400 instead of $66,000. Anyway, something for you to consider. I'm Dr. Ken Landau.